good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Morten Svindal and uh, behind the camera we have uh, Gry Larsson and um, we are now going to um, present uh, one of the things that happened on this island on Oscar's Boy Fortress 9th of April 1940. Of course the most famous thing is that uh, the two guns I have behind me, the uh, 11 inch or 28 centimeter Krupp, pretty old guns, uh, open fire against the cruiser Blücher at 4.21 in the morning on 9th of April. And of course the implications of that attack and the fact that Blücher was sunk and, and the rest of the combat group had to, to, um, to uh, delay their direction, uh, that led to um, the fact that uh, the political leadership and the king uh, got the uh, opportunity to get out of Oslo. And as such the German coup failed. Although the invasion only was delayed about, let's say, three days. But I'm going to concentrate on another issue uh, during this, uh, this attack. So we are now uh, south of the Drebak Narrows, about uh, 1,800 meter, meters from uh, the Oskarsborg Fortress and the main battery. And this is probably exactly where uh, Lützow was the 9th of April 1940 when uh, he saw uh, the flagship Blücher pass into the Drebak Narrows uh, with, um, with its um, plane in torches and, uh, with, uh, and the fire from, from Kopos battery as well. Um, at that time, uh, Captain Thiele, the commander on Lützow, decided to fire against, um, against uh, uh, the main battery and he did, did so with his port six inch battery and we can see from from the journal that they fired one round each uh, but didn't see any impact so probably it went over and then he, d he decided to fire with his main armament the uh, the uh, the uh, triple uh, uh, turret up front uh, with 11 inch guns 28 centimeters but exactly when he was going to fire he was hit by a six inch round from Kupos battery and that partly destroyed or at least temporarily destroyed the turret so they couldn't fire the 11 inch uh, battery and that probably saved a lot of people up in, in uh, uh, on Kaholmen as well. So the Lützow was probably in this position or approximately in this position when it was hit uh, almost simultaneously by three rounds and uh, one round hit the, the, um, the forward uh, turret one hit uh, on the port side and destroyed or at least killed and uh, injured several on two out of the four six inch guns and one 88 millimeter gun so a lot of the guns on in up front on on the port side were actually temporarily destroyed and it also hit in the uh, medical compartment uh, one one round there and that started a fire that uh, made a lot of smoke uh, on the front of the ship so they couldn't really see forward um, however uh, Captain Thiele thought that they were under fire from the main battery on uh, Kaholmen and not from Kupos. So he, um, he decided to, to, um, to pull out um, after, after a short while um, and when he did that he also heard two, um, two uh, explosions from, uh, from the lead ship from Blücher and uh, later uh, heard that they had underwater explosions and also that uh, they had lost their propulsion. Uh, so when he pulled out uh, he had full speed um, backwards and doing so he almost crashed with the following cruiser, the Emden. So all of a sudden he had to go back and a full speed forward and to avoid the Emden. Then the Emden went out to the east and, and he could go full speed backwards again out to the, to the west. So the reason Captain Thiele thought that he was under fire from, from uh, the main battery was that the explosions from, from the, the uh, shells that hit him actually exploded on his port side. Uh, and the reason for that was, ex was actually that the, the um, rounds from Kopos went through the hull and exploded on the port side of the, of the vessel. So his situational awareness was not very good at that time when he thought he was under fire from one battery but actually was under fire from the other one. Um, 
And um, when he pulled out, he said later when he was a vice admiral in the in the Bundesmarine after the war in 1954, he said in a report that if it hadn't been for the fact that he had uh, that he had 400 troops on board, he would have continued to go through the Narrows. Uh, however, I doubt that. I doubt he would have done that. So the main battery on Kaholm had only fired two guns. Uh, that was all they had manning to, and two rounds. And then it would take um, five, ten, maybe fifteen minutes to load. They were quite old-fashioned guns. So uh, Glitzo was under fire from Kopos. And uh, the reason I doubt uh, 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 Captain Tillis' explanation that he would have entered the, the Narrows if he didn't have troops on board was that he was in an, impos in an impossible situation, at least the way he, um, he thought it was. Because if he was under fire from 1500 meters range by 28 centimeter guns or 11 inch guns, and he had lost his forward turret, he had lost several of his port side guns, he didn't actually have any any way to fight the uh, the uh, battery on his uh, port uh, bow, so uh, he would be a, more or less a sitting duck if he, if he went through here. And what also happened when he started pulling out was that he heard the explosions from uh, Blücher, so he knew that there were underwater weapons, mines or torpedoes here. So the the situation was impossible at that stage for the Germans. So. The remaining cruisers and the remaining ships from, from the uh, uh, combat group 5 had to pull out of the, the range of the uh, fortress. So after Blücher was hit by the main battery and uh, later by, by the uh, battery on the land side, the 6-inch battery, and then by two torpedoes from the torpedo battery, and uh, sunk one hour later, then the second ship in this combat group, the Lützow, the Lützo was a um, uh, so-called so uh, panzer schiff. Uh, it was um, also called for uh, called a pocket battleship since it had some oversized guns, 11-inch guns on a cruiser, um, almost battleship guns. Uh, and uh, when it came as a second ship pair, it had to. Uh, it was hit by several rounds from Kopos battery, six-inch battery, and also learned what happened to Blücher. So it had to pull out. And, uh, and did so with the rest of, of the combat group. Um, when, after that, the, the air attack started, and there were several air attacks, about 10 hours with air attacks here at Toskaspor, and 500 bombs were dropped. So one of the worst air attacks so far in, in war history. But after that, um, in the middle of the day, after having uh, put his, his troops uh, ashore in Sun further south, then the commander on Lützow, um, Captain Thiele, he uh, decided to bombard the fortress with his, uh, his 11 inch guns. So he went into a position about uh, Filtvet, which is the, the peak you can see out there on the mainland on the western side, about 10,000 meters away from here, and started to bombard the fortress with 315 kilo shells, 27 of them. There was no big dis destruction of, of infrastructure, but of course, psychologically, that, that meant something as well. Um, but um, and then he he, uh, he told the the second cruiser the Emden to go in closer and find out whether the uh, defenders were hoisting the white flag. So when the smoke was settling, they could actually see the flag the flag mast at the top here, and they saw that it was still a Norwegian flag flying there. There was no white flag. During this bombing and bombardment, then. Uh, Colonel Eriksen lost connection with uh, the, the, uh, the surroundings. He lost connection with his commanding officer at 8 o'clock in the morning, where he called and said that you are on your own. And at 9 o'clock in the morning, the, uh, the landlines were bombed, so there was no way he could get connection. Uh, but he learned that, uh, that the, uh, the king and the government had, uh, had been able to leave Oslo, and that Oslo would soon be occupied by German troops that had landed on the airport of Fornebu. Um, then uh, Captain Thiele learned from, uh, from Germany that uh, there was an attack coming to attack Derbach, uh, an air attack. Uh, uh, with that message, they also said that uh, that is a possibility for a breakthrough. Now, uh, Captain Thiele didn't want to try a breakthrough because 
he didn't want to take the risk to go through the, uh, the Drebak Narrows and uh, take the risk with possible mines and torpedoes. Uh, he wanted to control the fortress before he did that. But anyway, he used the opportunity. And I would claim that what he did that afternoon, about 17.15 in the afternoon on 9th of April, was probably the first, at least one of the first, combined attacks in the military history. Um, he used the opportunity, knowing that uh, there were actually 36 Heinkel HE 111s uh, taking off from bases in North Germany. Um, and he knew they would be here around 1715. At that time, he had placed his vessels, the Emden and the Lützow, uh, just outside uh, Filtvet, far enough away. Uh, for um, to, to uh, be quite safe for the guns at, at uh, the old guns at, at Oskarsborg because they were slow firing and only had range finders out to 7200 meters so they had to guess the, the range to, to, to start firing there and then um, the modern guns on uh, Lützow would easily um, put several rounds here uh, before they, they managed to reload again so it was quite safe to be there because he could, he could fire against the fortress. The fortress could probably not fire against him. And especially not since there was an air attack going on and these guns were all in open positions. So when the air attack started, then um, most of the uh, soldiers were running into shelter. And at Kupos, where there was no shelter, they actually had to run into the forest behind the gun positions. Um, because there were no, uh, no fortifications inside or around the gun positions. So they had to run about 100-200 meters when the air attack started. And then during that air attack, uh, two destroyers or small destroyers and uh, four so-called R-boats, small minesweepers, shallow water minesweepers, uh, with troops on board. One, each of those R-boats could take uh, about a platoon. They went into the harbor in Drebok. And there they landed troops, just a few platoons, and probably at the same time, uh, it's a bit difficult to get it documented, but probably at the same time, some of the troops that had previously been landed in Sun had come to the, um, the, the road and then ended up in, in uh, Drebak as well. And the, uh, the um, troops that landed in, in the boat harbor then took Kupos fortress by by surprise and and of course without any resistance because all the um, the soldiers there were uh, hiding in the forest behind the uh, the um, the um, battery so so I would claim that that certainly was a tactical level combined attack and and the strange thing is that if you look in Norwegian sources Norwegian books it seems like they kind of portray a, a number of independent actions more out of coincidence, but certainly it was not a coincidence. It was the first combined attack in the military history, all orchestrated by Captain Thiele on his ship Lützow outside uh, Filtvet.